very good morning to everyone. Today we have with us a very special guest, Ms. Deepshika Verma from Cradle to Crayons, Montessori and Daycare. So before we get into our session, let me introduce her to all of you. Ms. Deepshika is the Director and Principal of Cradle to Crayons Montessori. She has worked as an early childhood educator for a decade. Though she started her career in the field of IT, she was fascinated by Montessori way of teaching and then decided to start her own school based on the curriculum of Montessori. She is a certified student counsellor and also a life skill coach. A very warm welcome to you, Ms. Deepshika. It's a privilege to have you with us today. Good morning. Thank you so much for such a warm welcome. Okay, so to begin with, I'm really firstly fascinated with the name. Uh, it's such a unique one, Cradle to Crayons. So can you tell me the thought behind it? Oh, absolutely. So our concept is once we deal with a very, very young age, as young as 11 months also. So our concept is once the child comes to us, they're nice, soft, cuddly in a cradle. Yeah. But we work with the kid for next four years. And once they step out, they are confident enough to use their crayons out there in the big space. So this was the concept behind this name. Wow. And of course, you have mentioned that you were really fascinated uh, by the Montessori way of teaching. So was that the thought behind starting the school? Actually, yes. So I didn't want to go back into IT once my kids were born. And when I read an article about Montessori and I realized unknowingly, we were raising our kids the same way. Hmm. And I could see the difference, the way the kids were coming up, the personality, the confidence were coming up. And then I realized in and around parents are there who needs help with this age. So we thought, okay, let's give it a shot and create our own brand. And we started Pretty Great. Great. So which was the year that uh, Cradle to Crayons actually started? Our first session was in October 2014. Wow. Okay. So it's been quite a number of years by now. Quite long, yeah, yeah. A wonderful okay. journey till now. <laughs> Great. So tell me, um, you know, having uh, seen the city of Bangalore, especially that I'm talking about, there are these schools which keep coming up each year. You know, there are areas which are just school belts where there are a number of schools. So apart from those primary, secondary schools, we also have these preschools which are there in probably every second and third lane. So with so many schools coming all around, how does Cradle to Crayon stand to make a difference? See, schools coming up has never been an issue for anybody, I guess. Everybody's trying to their own bit. They're just adding to the society. Now, choosing a school depends on what is the requirement of a parent. Yes. which can be different from one house to another house. Mm. The environment where we have created here is it's absolutely pressure free and learning environment. We let the child choose. We let them go with their own pace, though we keep introducing new things to them. There's another thing which we have is we always introduce a concept within activity first. So it's more about what parent is looking for. Okay, absolutely. I think that's true because like you mentioned, there is a school which caters to, you know, every need. So there are different Absolutely. visions and different yeah. uh, requirements by the parents. Absolutely. So um, the next thing that I would like to know from you is that, you know, when parents come to you, uh, you know, a question in their mind is usually that, uh, you know, a child, maybe their child is about three years old and they see another child who's of the same age but their own child probably doesn't know as much as the other child. So do you think that there, is there a particular way that a child learns? See, I'll explain you in a very, very simple way. And the same thing we share with the parents also. Keep a target from one to six years. Okay. I consider this age has different boxes in the brain. Mm -hmm. 
our as a teacher job is to fill up all the boxes that can be your linguistic that can be your speaking skills your creativity your cognitive skills now what happens if if they say the child they comparing on the speaking skills let's say with another kid but there will be some more assets which your child has and maybe the other kid has not even grabbed hold so what happens is every kid gets everything with their own pace so for example we usually get is one is very hyper very active child very talkative but we struggle for him to get hold of him in explaining the concepts though if a child is on a quieter side not running around not very verbal he gets a concept in the one session itself so the thing is we give them time to the kid to grab hold of all the concepts as per their age and interest so there is no comparison at least till this age that's exactly what we do. another uh, need that you know parents have today i mean they i won't say need but they really want their children to be like that so that is building an overall personality so Absolutely. i mean you usually end up seeing that a uh, child once he or she comes back from school the child ends up going to different classes whether it's art music dance whatever robotics whole lot of stuff so do you think that there is anything that a parent can do to inculcate this kind of a skill of developing an overall personality of their child absolutely so i'll just give you a very simple example to explain this the five days of the week we touch one kind of a skill maybe it's the physical it's the creative it's your life skill it's your speaking and presentation skills where your confidence is built up it's your music and hobby now we encourage parents to come and join these sessions with us what happens is the kid if they enjoy the activity they go home and they want to repeat and the frustration comes when the parents cannot do the same thing at home so definitely personality development is an overall thing but every day something new something exciting is what children looking for and this keeps them internal motivated so you don't have a bored kid here or you don't have a bored kid at home so anything you show up they know they're ready to do that for you wow that sounds really interesting and that like you rightly said it's so important for the parents to understand what the child is actually interested in that would really help the parent as well now coming to uh, you know the activities uh, that we talk about uh, one is that how important are activities in your school and how much of emphasis do you give to these activities as part of curriculum if i say activity is the key for our curriculum okay you pick up any concept it can be basic colors it can mm. be numbers it can be sounds it can be spelling or it can be complicated things like a grammar let's say i'm working on the tenses i want them to work on the adverbs adjectives so for all these things we do an activity first which can be a group activity one on one it can be sitting it can be physical it can be running around or making or building something so any concept for that instance is introduced in a form of activity to the child so this they grab hold of it we call it as a concrete form once they understand the concept we have a similar thing in the books and then we introduce the books to them so anything which is done it is from the activity based and then to the writing part so concrete the work they understand and then we put it into the abstract okay now um you must have come across parents like gone are the days i think when uh, parents used to just put the child in a school which was closest uh, you know to their home today uh, one of the question that lingers on in their minds is about the boards so uh, you know whether the school is igcsc icsc cbsc you know uh, of course though they come into the picture at a higher grade level but still so as an educator do you think that boards do they really uh, kind of define a child's success absolutely not if you connect it to the su- success definitely not yeah. i strongly believe if a child is academically strong you put in a government school or the home school and they will perform true if another way the child is more creative and not inclined towards the academics you do whatever whichever board boarding school international school they will not perform Here, I think choosing a board is depending on your child's personality. 
so what we do is let's say next year i know my kids will be moving on to the bigger school so in the month of september we always have a set of three meetings where we'll just explain them what all is the options out what every board offers them what is the environment of schools in and around the 5 km area that they look then they discuss and shortlist on the personality that the child has both of us parents and the teachers they sit together shortlist at least 5 to 6 schools and then the parents go ahead with it so i think board is totally dependent on what the parents are looking for and what kind of a child we have yeah absolutely and that's such a unique way of helping the child understand i wish i mean more parents and schools would do that to make the child and parent understand that what kind of board uh, should their child go into depending on the child's needs absolutely and uh, of course there are few parents not all of them since now things are changing but some of them still uh, focus a lot on the percentages and the marks that a child gets so do you think that academics alone is enough for a child to succeed in life absolutely not see there are parents who look for it and i'm not questioning anybody right every parent yeah. wants best for their child hmm. now for such cases what we try to explain them you take 24 hours remove the sleeping time hmm. so the time when the child is awake give at least 1 to 1 and a half hour where the child's brain is free free in the sense there is no instructions going into his head it could be a dance class but there is an in teacher who is giving instructions keyboard class again i am following the instructions you put whatever you do academics tuition everything but give that one one and a half hour where maybe he is just sitting and lying down in the lawn maybe he is just walking around so what happens is that free mind for one one and a half hour where there are no instructions around there is no rules to be followed the kids grab hold of the academics in a matter of and the second thing is of course it has to be done on an everyday basis it's like eating food hmm so if you don't do that once a week or over the weekend is not going to help yeah so this is one thing which parents definitely can opt if they're more inclined towards the academic so otherwise after 3 4 years the brain will be tired and yeah. suddenly once they enter the teenage they will see a lot of frustrations mm-hmm. answering back it mm-hmm. is because the brain is tired he needs to come rest yes. so this is one thing that can be Hmm. And uh, you know, with uh, of course uh, use of mobile phones and technology, there is a lot of digitization that has occurred, uh, especially recently. And uh, you can't just shy away from all these things because that's what is the need of the art. But uh, even a child who's as young as probably six year months or probably few, you know, maybe eight months. would know how to at least handle the basics of the phone so mm-hmm. in such a scenario how do you think that we can inculcate curiosity amongst the children see this digital era putting it absolutely away i mean i'm in a favor ke till 2 years at least the parents they cannot give but there are tvs and all that but these things can be introduced with some set of rules some timing rules So what will happen? What we have seen is if the child doesn't have, let's say, I'll give you a very simple example of chips. Very simple, right? Let's say a parent never gives the chips to the kid. I have seen kids going to the birthday parties and hogging only onto the chips. So the thing is, you want, you don't want the child is craving for it. Though if you can say, okay, weekly you'll get one bowl on, let's say on Friday, we have a free day here for the food in the school. So he knows that I cannot eat out because I will get. So the same goes with the digital thing. Let's see if you want to give because other kids around him is doing it. Fine, put some rules there. Okay, let's say when we going out, we dining out only that time you'll get. Or put the timers. Okay, you have 15 minutes over and then get it out. One more thing, when you removing the digital from a child, the parents need to put the phones down too. If the parents are using and you say it's like. Yes. You smoking and you ask your child no cigarette is bad don't yeah. do it. It doesn't work. Very They true. look up to you. You mm-hmm. are their idol. The what you going to do the kids will learn on. So I think little limitations and bit of the rules will help them out. Yes. So uh 
in connection with the same so with so much of of course we can you know kind of limit it and everything but then so how do we make our children explorers how do we make them curious about things how do we do that you know if they are all the time watching something they don't really uh, have get or inculcate curiosity so how do we make that happen see there are few things which can be done at home at school definitely we get it because we don't have a screen and we keep telling them for oh, this month there is a surprise coming up on the thursday they know it's a pre play day right so pre play is not like we'll let them open so they keep asking we turn it into a quiz or game mode so for example parents has some plan for the saturday okay i'll give you some hints tell me what it is it's a guessing game and it can be both ways also sometimes you see the child is also asking the same question this could be one reason second i strongly believe instead of the tv if you can just give them paints and whole set of books it can be picture books also it can be 3d books also still if you find you can go into only on the audio rather than putting the screen so few games and you parents can obviously hide you know the treasure hunt it's one of the things so again they keep the curiosity going on okay i have to search something something else is coming up to me so once the parents do this exercise for 2 3 weeks the kid gets into the loop of it. so that can be one of the ways to do mm-hmm. yes right so now coming to workforce as we call them the teachers the pillars of any school uh what is or what is the recruitment process so what are the ways in which you actually recruit your teachers and what are the qualities that you look for so one thing i usually don't try take the trained teachers okay it's very difficult personally which i have felt to undo the learnings that they have done that is more work so i always have minimum qualification as a graduate more than that i don't mind so our first step is in basic interview where we take a check on their linguistic skills the way they're speaking and the way they write i need the basic grammar or the handwriting that should be done if they clear this step we put them in the school environment obviously these are paid sessions for a span of time without any instructions from us they will be working as an assistant temporary teacher in the classroom and then we have our own way of assessing them there is a worksheet which there are two three coordinators who will assess them on those basis so we looking for the candidates who are gentle calm willing to work with this age group so we judge any person on this basis and this interview lasts as long as 3 weeks also at times wow so somebody can pretend for a day two day yeah. a week but by the next week the real personality starts coming up. yes yes so more than the qualification i know i'm skilled mm-hmm. i can train them i've trained so many teachers mm-hmm. that can be done but if the person is not willing internally i cannot yeah. leave the kids with them right okay. so this is how all the staff I member mean, that's why i have a blind trust any teacher i know what the person is capable of. that's a very interesting way of uh, selecting your teachers it works such now i have yes, a very strong I'm team sure. i'm sure i'm sure i mean i i absolutely i mean it, and it's so good because many times uh, we this uh, where, where a lot of schools they just do uh, even if it's there are three four rounds but it's just one demo and anybody can do a great demo on one particular day and you can really be sweet to the kids on one particular day but yes. like you said over a period of few weeks you can't really keep pretending day after day you That's, cannot yes absolutely and the thing is ultimately these are the people who are interacting with kids yes and yes. the age we deal they don't know what's happening to them emotionally correct correct they don't know they don't know what is right what is wrong mm-hmm. so if the person dealing with them doesn't know this then i'm not doing justice to this little age true true no absolutely you are very right and so uh, like um, most schools do have uh, induction programs or training programs right at the beginning of the session so do you also have some kind of a refresher training that happens during the course of the year absolutely so we have this every month workshop based on one skill for okay. all the teachers that's a very short program mm-hmm. plus every year somewhere in jan and feb i do get assessment done from my teachers 
Okay. Again, I am a believer for this. In a school system, we have a report card for the students. Syllabus changing, time is changing. We never do an assessment for the teachers. Maybe you know, and it's not to judge them whether they're good or bad. Mm. How much more input they need, how much more knowledge they need, mm. which skill needs to be worked on. So every year we get this assessment done. All the teachers are trained by one institute. The certification I get it done from my behalf, and the same people they come and assist them on their classroom taking skills, their books management, their creativity for the activities. It's an entire day assessment. And if they found, if we find some gaps, then based on that we plan the trainings for these teachers. So it's an every year fixed thing for all the staff members. Mm. Yes, and I think, like you said, oh, there's a very valid point that based on the needs of that particular teacher that she is trained, that it can't be one size fits all. Absolutely. That everybody is put in the same training. Absolutely. So yes, that's wonderful. Now, what is the student-teacher ratio that you follow at school? Now, see, for the younger kids, it goes one to is to six. For the okay. older one, it is one is to eight. Wow. That's a very good student teacher ratio. I'm sure all the children would be getting individual attention. Oh, absolutely! Every yes. single day, yes. every yes. single day. Absolutely, yeah. That. And your daycare timings are up to what time? Till 6 p.m. From morning nine till 6 p.m. Okay. And what are the what is the age group that you take for daycare? We have as young as 11 months. Okay. And goes up to till 12 and 13. Okay. But whenever we talk about daycare or for the school. the same protocol which we follow for hiring a teacher is for settling a kid till date not even a single single kid we have settled down in the school without the parent and for how long parent has to accompany it to purely taken call by a child few kids within the first day they enter they so excited usually the 3 year olds they don't even turn back to their mamas but if a young kid who's not willing to leave but she's still enjoying the school So there was this one father who actually used to log in from our school for a half month because daughter just wanted to peep after every 15 20 minutes okay he's sitting he's sitting and he patiently did that so that initial trust building is very very important for mm. the daycare and for the yes 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 absolutely so coming to uh, the parent participation you know whether um, if, even if it, it, you don't believe in homework but some kind of activities that is given for home or the activities that take place at school certain events what kind of a participation do you expect from the parents so there are few sessions where we invite parents to come over okay and take the session for the school it can be story time it can be dancing time Okay, okay because kids they enjoy that particular part yes. second we have one uh, we call it as a presentation skills where we work specifically on the speaking skills of the kids so the parents are involved in these exercises also we don't prepare the kids for this so they have to do a particular part and a few years back i started sending homeworks on tuesdays and thursdays not to train kids to train parents because suddenly in the first grade the homework is coming and the parents are like going blank what shall i do in the shikha school there was no homework and suddenly i have to sit with my child so i always tell them even a pre nursery the 2 year old will get a homework and it's your responsibility just to be there they are independent they'll do it just be around so that you also get into the circle yes plus any event there is a free invitation for all the parents and lot of volunteers comes i don't hire people from outside why they so skilled parents so they come over fathers and mothers sometimes grandparents also to be part of any event that is happening at school lovely so tell me with deep shikha there are we know that each child is unique and they all learn at their own pace now there are some children because we do have learning objectives drawn for each year for each age group but then there are children who almost by the end of the year or you know towards the end have still not been able to cope up or understand certain concepts so in such a scenario uh, what kind of a support system do you have at your school to help these children So uh, we do an assessment every 15 days for all the kids. 
so whatever work if somebody is lagging so if there is the child who is not being able to cope up we will come to know within a month let's say 3 months is the final one where we do the paperwork still if we feel the child is not going as per the curriculum we change remove the books and we change the format that you have to introduce the concept to the child maybe some other because see every child when we talk about the learning they have a different way of everybody doesn't has a good visual everybody doesn't has a good audio it can be so we change our way as per the mm-hmm. child mm-hmm. we don't wait till end of the year mm-hmm. because we come to know initially only there's something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there are times when we feel okay there is a speech delay which after pandemic we found there was a lot of kids with yeah. the speech delays mm-hmm. so our curriculum is made in a way if the child is going with slightly slower pace still his basis will be done okay stating that there is another thing which lot of uh time we you know uh, misjudge it there are brains there are kids who wants to know more than their age yes so if we get, we always concentrated the one who's slow what about mm. the one who's fast yes yes so our curriculum has the chapters for those kids also otherwise yes. they'll be bored and they'll mm-hmm. store start throwing tantrum whatever teacher is taking i already know this nothing yes. exciting so mm-hmm. our curriculum takes care of both of them the point is by the time the child moves to the bigger setup let's say first grade because mm-hmm. we are to top of kg mm-hmm. the kid should be academically as per the board level mm-hmm. or 50% 60% percent above it. till date all our kids are academy on the above of the first and second grade till third grade syllabus is not a problem for my uk kids they can get math science everything so well. wow <laughs> lovely i am proud on that my bachas are doing very well in the bigger school That's so lovely. i don't like to find out the word for yeah. i'm sure credit goes to you and your staff completely absolutely so tell me um you know what are the major of course uh, you know you must be having a different kind of activities on a weekly monthly basis but what are the major events that happen on a yearly basis in your school so we have every friday there is a music class that's again a huge event taken by somebody else it's based on the music and the motor movement then every month we have a speaking you would you can say a competition because the child is competing with its own self we give a topic we have a huge auditorium at the school the target is the child should go on the stage hold the mic and speak out maybe it can be simple colors but again the stage play goes on so every month we have this then usually uh, around the festivals we create a free day maybe you know navratras are there or the diwali or the christmas where again the parents comes over and we have a small kind of a get together and the final goes in the march that is your annual day it is a clean you know complete 2 hours program presented by the child really nice i like the concept of helping the children overcome stage fear that's so important very important yes very very important. absolutely another uh, concern i would say in the minds of parents or a query that they always have when they go around looking for schools is pertaining to safety though the government has uh, given guidelines to all the schools and mandated that they all have certain protocols in place but at uh, your school what are some of the safety steps that you have taken to ensure that the child is safe so then dire places grill we don't have open windows you know because the school is on the first floor uh, second we have cctv cameras we don't give the access to the parents at home but they can sit here and do observation third we have lot of open space we have not crowded it with the furniture so the kids have full space to run around they work on the folding cloth mats so when they working they open the mat they work in there after that they fold it and they have the open place to run around then since we deal with young kids our all material is painted by non toxic paints plus we do a cleaning with detol water on the floor as well as the material the wiping of and this has been the day we started the school we started doing this so these are the few measures that we have taken care okay so which area is your school located this is in banaswadi main to kalyan any plans of uh, either starting more branches or taking the grades 
up to second or higher up grades no i enjoy this age group i think the i personally feel first is the good stage for the child to go into the bigger school yes they are excited about it after second they may be a bit hesitant this is my personal view i think this is the good time they can you know the seed can be sowed into the bigger one branches yes maybe down the line not working on the franchisee model that's not what i believe in so okay let's, great so finally tell me what was that eureka moment for you when you decided that you wanted to be an educator oh <laughs> i came up with this thing you know when you used to sit in a get together let's say you are with the friends or somebody we would me and my husband i would give a equal credit to him so we never discussed our parenting with anybody else and there was a time i used to feel that i am the odd one out i'm not running after the grades i'm not running and going to the pdms so i used to feel am i doing wrong but we kept doing but down the line i realized that this is the best form that you can let a child grow it's a young adult that we consider they need to be independent they need to be self sufficient so i think that was the time i decided okay let's not go back to the it will work it on our own setup where like minded people can come and they can take the advantage of our experience and i'm sure that uh, in all these years you would have met and a lot of parents who would have been like minded because uh, the vision that you carry and the passion that you carry for your work is just amazing So towards the end, we would like to really wish you all the very best, Ms. Deepshika, and thank you so much that your school scales greater heights. And uh, the next time that we have you with us, that there would be more branches, and uh, may you succeed in all your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.